think of wildlife and, and uh, charismatic fauna, they don't think of freshwater unless they're anglers. Um, but they think of, you know, the African savannas or coral reefs or so freshwater, I think is overlooked uh, by scientists. Uh, there's a lot more people going into marine biology or even terrestrial biology. Um, but it's also overlooked, I think, uh, by, by the public, by, by the way we communicate it, by uh, the way we involve people or engage people to, to want to protect freshwater or to even know anything. I think freshwaters are typically viewed as um, sort of a commodity, something that we can use for drinking water or for washing your clothes and that sort of thing, but not as a biodiversity hotspot, which is actually what they are. If you look at sort of the planet as a whole, uh, freshwaters cover about 2.3% of the surface. And it, they represent about 0.01% of all water on earth. Yet there's 9.5% of species that live in freshwater and about 55% of fish, I'm a fish biologist, 55% um, of fish that actually depend on freshwater for at least one part of of their life cycle. So if you consider how small of a proportion of the planet they are and how much um, biodiversity are in there, it's actually, they are hotspots. So, and, and we, we need to, to protect them. And I think this is where the link to dam removal comes in is dams and, and barriers to connectivity, barriers to movement and, and their impacts on habitats are probably one of the main if not the main um, culprit for, for this decline. And I, I investigated the effects of dams and barriers, uh, big and small, uh, but in particular, the effects of removing them. And when you see sort of a river come back to life, um, I mean, it, it's impressive and, it, and it, just, it really doesn't take much, just removing that barrier and nature will, will do its thing. Um, so I think, I was convinced, of course, by the scientific evidence, but also from my own experience, from my own eyes, uh, having seen it happen. And I was lucky enough to have um, monitored, I think, 22 uh, barrier removals uh, over the last three years. So we freed about 310 kilometers of river. And I think in Denmark, for such a small country, that's uh, it's rather good. I mean, ideally, there would be a strategy, but uh, life sometimes makes it that that's a bit difficult. Um, ideally, if we want to get the most sort of bang for our buck, we would want to remove the bears that have the biggest impact. The problem with that is that the bears that have the biggest impact are usually the ones that have the biggest um, sort of uh, opposing sides. So in Denmark, they've adopted kind of a do what you can uh, mm -hmm. strategy. So I think the push is, and it is in the legislation that, that removal should be um, the first option. So we've worked, uh, Denmark is split into about a hundred municipalities. So we've worked with the local municipalities and, and that's what they try to do is, is remove barriers. And every year they get some money from the government. So they look at what barriers they can remove with that. My message would be that I guess you have to start somewhere and you need to push for those those things, dam removal as a first option to be in the legislation. And yeah, I, I, I don't think I have a solution that's gonna work everywhere, but I do know that the, the public opinion does matter. So, so I think if we can teach the public, if we can teach people, if we can educate them about fresh water, what they offer, how important they are, I think if we can get the public on our side, um, that that would, would make it easier um, to, to try and enact. Uh, what we can learn is that it's, it, it's a battle. Uh, it's not something that changed overnight here. It's a lot of people working really hard for a really long time that has led to what we have today. Um, so I would say, don't, don't give up, don't stop. Uh, it's, it, but it, it's coming and every small win is a win. I think it's our responsibility, uh, all of us to, to care, um, but especially for, for people who are aware of the issue, uh, freshwater conservationists and fish biologists, I think it's also our duty to, to be really loud and really passionate 
um, when we when we talk about fresh water, we need to inspire people to want to care, um, and that falls on us.